What's going on everyone? Today we're going to start my introduction to 3D printing. This one is going to be something that gives you a baseline of if you're interested in 3D printing, but basically don't have any knowledge of it beyond that. This is kind of the approach that I'm going to take to it. In this series, we're going to be going step by step through a project and that's going to be the Open RC F1. That's basically a fully 3D printed RC car and I figured that would be a great project for my audience. For this series, I'm going to be using this TiVo Tornado. It's a $330 printer that just has good settings, a great owner's base, and it performs really well, especially for the cost. In these videos, we're gonna try and break it down into small hurdles. There's a lot of little things that can be overwhelming with 3D printing, and if you just break it up and look at individual problems or challenges at a time, it may not feel so overwhelming. In this video, what we're going to do is we're going to show you the basics of the Slicer software, which is the program you use to create the files that the 3D printer actually uses. The other thing we're going to do is look at first layer printing. Now, first layers are the most difficult part of 3D printing, to, especially when you're beginning. But once you understand what you're looking at and you've got your printer fairly well set up, usually it's not a problem. You can start 3D printed files and just kind of walk away. So at this point, we're gonna jump over to Cura, which is the software we're going to be using. It's a free program that has a ton of support and it's just a very popular option that people use to control their 3D printers. If you're using a printer that's open source based like this one here, it's likely supported by Cura and you shouldn't have any problems using the same software to get yourself up and running. So let's jump over there and I'll show you what it takes to import a file and get your basic settings going. So what you see here on the screen is what pops up when you open Cura. Once again, this is a very popular program, very commonly used, and you should be able to find plenty of support for whatever printer you may be purchasing. There was very easy to follow settings for the TiVo Tornado, and I'll link to the video I used for that below in case you're having any questions. Once you're to this screen and you've got your basic settings created, this is where you need to start with importing files. So if we go to the top and we hit File, Open Files, so then you can browse to whatever files you're going to create. I have already downloaded all of the OpenRC F1 files, and that's what you see here. Now within these files, there's instructions and bill of materials, all that type of thing. So if you have any questions on what we're printing, there's plenty of info in here. As I mentioned before, we're gonna start with the chassis files. So we're gonna find the front and rear chassis files here in the list, chassis front and chassis rear. You can hold shift and click on each to select both files and then hit open. So it brings both of them in. As you can see, the one out here on the bottom right is outside of the bed or the printable area, but you can grab the actual file itself and just click and drag it out of the way to create more room on your bed. If you've got a print bed that is not large enough to print both at one time, you just can print one at a time. It's pretty simple, almost no difference. You're just gonna have to do this process twice. So what I'm gonna do is bring both files in here and nest them as close as I can. The only thing that I've noticed about Cura that I don't really like is that the view, you know, as you get down, you can't really get into some of the places to view because it wants to zoom in towards the center. Not sure if that's just me or there's a setting, but it's a little bit annoying. On the right side, we've got some very basic settings. Almost nothing that you really have to worry about. These are just very basic. And if you just wanna start printing some parts to get the hang of things, this is a good place to start. Now, if you want to get more in depth, you can go over to custom. Now in custom, we really get into a ton of different options. However, there are preset options up here. Now I've got draft quality selected and this is all to default settings at this point. I pretty much always use custom because I have been around 3D printing. I do like to tweak or change things a little bit depending on what I'm printing. For this very first video and just this introduction to try and keep things as high level as possible, we're gonna work with this recommended setting. And again, we're gonna stay with 0.2 and 20% infill. There's this button here that says generate support. Now what support means is that when the, you have something with a large overhang, uh, imagine you're printing something with the letter shape T. As you need to do that to create those big flats that would be towards the top of the T, it can't just print the material out in thin air. So it prints a lattice work from the very first layer up until that to give it a base to print on. Later on in the series, we'll absolutely have to be printing things with support. 
This one, however, we have very few overhangs. We have a little bit down here in the front lip and down here around where that front lip ties into. This one kind of goes in, but then comes back out. However, these are so gradual that I don't think that we're going to need to use any support material. So at this point, we're ready to print. You can go here in the bottom right corner and hit prepare. So it's given us an estimate of how long it's gonna to take to print this. This is a long print. This is a very large surface area, so it's gonna take a considerable amount of time. This is one of those ones that we're gonna set up and leave run overnight. We're gonna save this to a file. We're gonna save it in my directory. Chassis front is fine. Save. I'm using the SD card reader on the side of the TiVo to print my files. I don't have it tied directly into my laptop. I'm just using the SD card. That way I don't have to have the computer tied to it and I can just let it run. So we're gonna save this file over to the SD card and then we're gonna put that SD card into the printer. So at this point you have your file ready to start printing. In the very basic setup of your 3D printer, there was likely something that discussed bed leveling. And bed leveling is extremely important. It's one of the most important things that you need to do and make sure is correct before you start your 3D print. There's a lot of different methods for bed leveling. I'm not going to go completely into it. I'm just gonna show you some of the basics because again, bed leveling can be different for every printer but the method that I use is using a sheet of regular printer paper. The Z axis is the up and down axis. And what I do is I home the Z axis, which is the zero height basically. And once the Z axis is at that home position, you wanna be able to take and put that piece of paper under the nozzle, but with a little bit of friction. You want it to fit but you can tell that it's dragging on both the nozzle and the bed. Not a lot, you wanna be able to still move it around, you wanna be able to exit from underneath the nozzle and enter again without an issue. The hard part of this is, is that you need to do this at positions all over your bed so that it's extremely even all around. On the TiVo Tornado, there's four knobs, one at each corner. And what you need to do is just move the nozzle to, you know, this front corner, make sure that it's got that tension but is movable. Move the nozzle over to the other corner, make sure the same. It's got tension, but you can fit it under there. And you need to just go around the bed. But once you've gone around the bed, make sure you go back to the start position where you did and keep going. Because as you move one, it can pitch the bed around and it's just, it's an iterative process that you need to get right. So I suggest looking into how your bed is leveled and very carefully going through that process. Once you get it right though, it is much easier. And if you have any issues, it's very easy to adjust from that point. But you want to make sure you set yourself up with a good base. I can't stress how important this part of 3D printing is. When leveling your bed, if you have a heated bed, make sure and heat it up to roughly the temperature you're going to print at. Just as things expand and move around, you wanna make sure that you're leveling it at that same height. Something else you may notice is that I've got blue tape on here. This is blue painter's tape. And it's very important that it's painter's tape and not just a regular masking tape but there is also specific tapes and materials that you can use to print on. I've always had really good luck with blue painter's tape. It's just been my go-to since I started and I don't use any extra glue or hairspray or any of the very specific print materials that are used for 3D printing. I've had very good luck with this. I don't often have a problem. It's fairly inexpensive. I buy the three inch wide rolls and they last me quite a while. You will need to replace it from time to time. Not every print, but as you'll go, you'll notice that it'll get torn up or you might rip it while you're trying to remove a print from the bed itself. So now we're ready to start our print. I'm going to jog through the menu and start the print from the SD card. At this point now, the bed is going to heat up. I'm using PLA material. That is the easiest material to print from. It's very forgiving. It just prints nice, it sticks well. It's not the most durable material, but it works pretty well for most applications. But for this series and to learn 3D printing on, it's a good material to use. So at this point, the heated bed on mine is cranking up. I'm using the heated bed at 60 degrees Celsius. For the nozzle temperature, I'm going to be printing at 200 degrees Celsius. Different materials may react slightly different and adjusting for different materials as far as the heat goes may take a little bit of learning, but we'll look at that in later episodes. Once the nozzle on this 3D printer is up to temperature, then the printer is going to find its home position. 
X is left and right, Y is front to back, and Z is up and down. Once it finds its home position, then it's going to do what's called a brim, and that is a setting in Cura that is on by default. And what that is, is going to print a line around the outside of the parts, and that line I use to make sure that the nozzle is extruding the material properly and bonding well. Now, what I mean by bonding well is that the material is, you can tell, sticking to the bed, not just curling up behind it, and that it's got a little bit of flattening going on. Very fine details that start out printing can sometimes have difficulty really getting going. I like to make sure that I give it a little bit of time to work its way around. Sometimes the name on the bottom of this chassis, which is the creator's name, can have a little bit of difficulty. Those are things that tuning your printer and having you know the proper temperatures and speeds and good stiction on the bed itself you'll find make better performing prints. So again, once you get that first layer performing well, you're going to have less and less problems. This is the hardest thing to get going when you get a new printer. We're gonna let this thing crank through the first layer on the rear half of the chassis, and then it's going to move to the front half of the chassis, and we'll check back in on it then. So at this point, our printer has completed the first layer of the first part and has moved on to the second part. Now the challenge with this is that it's using a large portion of the bed and you need to make sure that the second part starts as well. However, the brim that it printed at the very beginning should help to make sure that you found out that it was going to print correctly from the start. Being that this is kind of an introduction, I'm gonna keep things at a pretty high level and not get too far in depth to details and tuning at this point at the very least. So like I mentioned, this print is over five hours long. I'm going to let this print overnight, come in in the morning, check to make sure that everything printed properly, pull it off of the bed, In the next video, we'll go one step further into problems and things that you need to overcome when you begin 3D printing. Thanks for watching, guys. Like the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you're not already, and we'll see you on the next one.